Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at outboard motors. Uh, you might have seen one of our series we did a while back on how to take apart and rebuild the carburetor. Today we're going to focus on how to go about rebuilding the fuel pump on a Mercury outboard. And they're going to be similar regardless of which your outboard is. The part numbers will be different, the look may be slightly different, but the steps you see here will certainly apply to other outboards as well. Hope you find this video useful. We're going to dig in and go right close up and show you what all we need to do. You want to remove your hose that goes from to the carburetor, that's this side, and you can see it because there's an arrow here that points up and over, that's the flow of fuel. This is the one that goes to the carburetor. This is the input line and you can see right here is my inline filter. So on the front, this goes to the front of the outboard where the tank connects. Fuel goes through the filter to here and it goes into the bottom. I've loosened this up already, but what you want to do is take this screw out. So now it's just a matter of actually pulling this out. You got to go at a slight angle so you can get the plunger out of there. Now I'm going to move this out of the way. You're going to see the back of this. The way this works is the there's a lobe on the inside of the engine, right in that opening. There's oil in there, so you want to make sure you don't get water or anything else in here. Um, but what happens is that lobe pushes on this and it runs a small diaphragm. So as the lobe continues to push here, this is essentially a small manual diaphragm pump. So we are going to open this up and rebuild the diaphragm pump. Let's start with what it is we need. So the first thing you need for a rebuild kit is look up your actual manufacturer's part number or call your dealer, make sure you get the right one. This is a, a diaphragm kit for a fuel pump. This happens to be Quicksilver, which is just the retail brand of Mercury. It's still a Mercury part. And you can see we have a couple of parts. We have a diaphragm and a couple of gaskets and, and flappers. And we'll get into those in a little bit more detail. These parts were um, $63 plus tax. So that's what that cost. I did check to see what a new fuel pump would be. A uh, new fuel pump's about $160. So if you're really worried about this, you know, for two and a half times the price of the rebuild kit, you can go ahead and just buy a whole new one, especially if you wanted to have an extra as a spare. The very first thing we want to do is kind of take a look at what we have here. So as I mentioned before, you can see this is the orientation that sits in the motor. And I'm not sure how well you can see this, but there's an arrow here that shows the flow of fuel. It goes from the bottom pipe here, input, and output to the carb. So that's good to know. And then on the back we have four screws that hold this whole thing together. And this is my actual diaphragm pump. You can see it's going up and down a little bit here. So let's go ahead and just loosen these guys up. So now it's a matter of taking this apart. All we're going to do is hold down the metal part and we're going to gently lift this up. And I mean gently because if that gasket or flap is stuck anywhere, we don't want that to come off of there. Okay, so let's lock, walk through what we have here. So you'll notice on this part of the actual uh, fuel pump, I have this plunger that I mentioned before. This is the part that goes against the lobe and you can see it lifts up and down and it looks very much like this particular part here. And then we have this section here on the bottom and that is going to be these sections. You can see I have this here and then these two flaps are going to be below this cover. So we'll go ahead and start working on all these. Let's start with this bottom base here and I'm just going to use a screwdriver and very gently lift up here and then you'll notice I'm going to use my fingers and I'm just going to ever so gently pull on this. I don't want to rip it. I want this to come off in one piece mainly because I like to use the old pieces to know exactly the order everything else goes back in. I don't know how well you can see this, but these little sections here are almost worn out. These little baffles, they're very dry and brittle, and the new one does not work that same way. So we'll, uh, we'll set that aside for a moment. And now we're going to go ahead and take these small screws out of here. Loosen them up. It's going to be important we want to keep our orientation straight here. As I mentioned before, I like to use just a small flat blade if it fits in there. We want to do it very carefully because we absolutely want to make sure we know exactly the orientation of this guy. I don't know if you can see this. I can see this little white plastic piece and I can see the rubber flapper behind it. So what we're going to do is, I'm using the screwdriver so I can pick it up a little bit. This plastic piece, this, this is my gasket and this acts almost as a spring. It's a little bit of a plastic item and it helps put pressure on this so it goes back into the spot where it needs to. See, ever so carefully, I'm getting the screwdriver underneath it and using my fingers to just gently lift it up. There we go. So that's the way they came out. And you can see, it looks just like my new items there. So what basically happens here is these little flappers, 
They open and close over this hole. Open and close. And what that does is it allows, as the plunger is going up and down on this side, it plunges it down, which allows, you notice this side floats down a little lower. It pushes fuel down into that side, and ultimately it goes out this little opening. There's an opening through here that passes out that direction. And when it lifts back up, this side closes up against this white plastic piece, and this flap then lifts up, and it lets fuel suck in here through an opening between this and through this little tube and up through this opening and back into this section. So when it plunges back down again, it pushes it out this little hole, which fills this cavity, this cavity, and pushes out the fuel line. Scrape this a little bit, wipe it with a towel, and then I'm just gonna get some carb cleaner, choke cleaner, and spray this whole thing off real good, including in all of these lines as well. Um, there you go. see that. And same thing over this way. What I can't do, however, is show you this tube that goes from here up through this opening and outputs right here. Okay, the next part we're going to do is we're going to look at this next section. And you can see here is what my part looks like. What's interesting is on the back side, it's got this little T thing, which tells me this uh, lifts up and twists. So we're going to try to do exactly that. I'm going to push down against the table to do this. And sure enough, it just lifts right out. You want to be very cautious. There is a spring in there. We lift that guy out of there. So I'm going to start with taking this big outer spring off. I'm going to turn it over, pull this one out, and I'm going to leave them all sitting in the way they're coming out of here so I know exactly what order to put them back in and which side is upright and upside down. Note, if you want to take a look at how this works, it's easier to see outside of the part. So you can see I have my plunger, and this is, what the, this is where the piston lobe is pushing. And you can see it's just a slot there. And essentially, this piece fits in there. It's keyed, so it only goes in one way. And then you, when you twist it, you lift it up, it, it holds onto it right there. So that's the key to this whole thing. Okay, we have our parts all laid out the way it came out. These are all the old ones. I'm gonna go get this thing cleaned up with some uh, carbon choke cleaner, as well as a Berryman's parts dip. And let's go ahead and start putting these in from the bottom side. We're gonna start with the spring. And then we are going to put in our, um, our keyed plunger. You'll notice it's keyed. It'll only go in there one direction. Put my spring on here. By the way, this spring is wider on one end, and the wider end goes down. So I'm going to push this down. this way. And then I want to start with my, my plunger in one side, push it down, and rotate it around until it locks. There we go. Now all I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a little bit of downward pressure and I'm going to turn this just until all these holes are just well lined up. We want to make sure this sits in there just right. And that's my spot right there. So that's ready to go. You'll notice it looks, these little pieces have flapped up, but that's okay. When we go to put this together, what we'll do is we'll push on this a little bit just to get it lined up real nice. We now have our cleaned um, housing of the actual fuel pump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by putting in our small gasket first. And you'll notice this is keyed. There's a small notch. There is a small notch here, and there's a small notch at the top, and it lines up to a small notch right inside of this actual pump. So we're gonna do it on this side first. So well, the camera picks that up. Yep, my notch in the bottom is lined up, so that's perfect. You want the black rubber gasket first, the spring on top of it, or the plastic piece on top. But they can go in um, in the opposite direction. I can turn that 180 degrees. Okay, we've got that in place. Now we're just going to lay our small disc right down on top of that. And set our screws gently in here. And then we're going to turn them by hand or a tiny, tiny screwdriver, which is another preferred method of mine. Now you want to go ahead and get these snug. I have seen other people have a problem where one of these will come loose, vibrate loose, and just sort of fall inside of here. Obviously that will certainly cause a problem with your fuel pump if that were to occur. Now we're just going to go ahead and take our next gasket here, and we're going to place it also right on here. This is a really small gasket. Nothing really you need to do here short of um, lining it up. That's, that's it right there. 
and that's what's going to give us a nice seal all the way around the whole outside of this. Okay, I'm now about to put this piece on top of here. Now, keep in mind this part goes on that side. I'm going to stand up and look straight down at it so I can see. Again, I'm still putting pressure down with here with my thumb on this lobe because I want to make sure that those little ears aren't folding up out of, out of the, uh, in the way there. So I haven't tightened this up, but you can see now what it looks like assembled. And I am just going to go ahead and crank it down on these. Uh, as I mentioned before, when I'm tightening something like this, I like to go around it almost like you would lug nuts on a car. I alternate around it so I don't pull this thing down at an angle and squish the gasket in one direction or the other. I'm only going snug. I do not believe a Phillips head screwdriver is really good for cranking down tight on some of these. So you're going to notice these are combination slotted, um, slotted uh, screwdrivers or screws. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to tighten it up with the slotted driver. So as you can see, rebuilding this thing isn't all that hard. Um, we're doing it here at the house, so we have access to some tools and some products that you might not if you were doing this, you know, out on the deck of your boat uh, because your dinghy decided to, you know, bite the dust. Uh, but if I had to and I didn't have, like, the, my Berryman's parts dip to clean this, you can easily use a small flat blade screwdriver and scrape along inside of it to get any little buildup or residue or corrosion off, and then use a carb cleaner to clean it out. If you didn't have carb cleaner where you happen to be out on the boat, you could get by by soaking this in diesel. You could soak it in gasoline. You could soak it in like kerosene or lamp oil if you had it. Uh, just enough to really get it good and cleaned up. Before I ultimately put it into my outboard again, I would clean all those parts in gasoline and then you know wipe them dry. But you don't have to have that Berryman parts cleaner. It just makes it a little easier. So let's go ahead and get this reinstalled back on the motor. But it's really as simple as that. Uh, I'll show you how it reinstalls, but that's the extent of rebuilding a small fuel pump for a 9.9 .9 horsepower Mercury outboard. And this concept doesn't change for most outboards you're going to see. Obviously, you know, some of the some of the really large ones might have electric fuel pumps on them and, and whatnot. This does not. Carburetor, manual fuel pump, driven by a cam off of the, uh, the engine. Let's get to the outboard. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is get this fuel line installed that goes downward because it's not easy to get to. So I'm going to start by doing exactly that, simple as you would think it is, right? I'm just going to go ahead and put this guy on here, and then I'm going to uh, line up where I want my hose clamp to be. By the way, I had, I'll pull this other hose off right here. This is nothing more than the little water jet that shoots out down, right down below, that goes down into the water to show you you have water circulation when the engine's running. Uh, that fits right in front of this. I'm just going to go ahead and slide that in place. You may wonder how to go about testing this. It's pretty easy. Just hook up a hose or a small baggie to the back of the outboard, right where the output of the fuel pump is. Make sure you have something underneath it. Add a little bit of carb cleaner or uh, starting fluid to the motor and give it a pull. And when it just runs for a few seconds, you should certainly see fuel. So that's exactly what we want to see. Fuel's coming out of that. We know the fuel pump is now working. Before I replace that, I would get maybe one-tenth of that amount here. Okay, so we're going to do the last part of this here, which is going to be to connect the last fuel line that goes from the pump to the carburetor. So that's literally it. We took the fuel pump off, we rebuilt it, we put it back on, we made sure it was pumping fuel. It's as simple as that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. And I hope you're able to do this to your outboard if you need to. Safe sailing, y'all. Bye now. So I gave it one squeeze of the bulb, made sure my engine run is on. I've got my uh, out of gear here, so I've got about quarter throttle. I've got the choke on. Let's see.